In this example, we're going to demonstrate how to compute probabilities using general addition rule. So according to this rule, if we want to compute the probability that one or another event occurs, then we have to find the probability of the first event, add the probability of the second event, and subtract probability of A and B, so that's both events happening at the same time. So let's look at the example to make a little bit more sense out of this. In this example, we have a calendar and it says that one of the dates um, of June 2016 is randomly selected. Find the given probability. The first probability that we need to find is that one of the dates of June 2016 that we randomly selected is either Tuesday or a Thursday. So let's apply this formula, the general addition rule. So it's a Tuesday or a Thursday. So according to this formula, we have to find probability of the first event. So probability that that day is a Tuesday. Add the probability of the second event. So Thursday and subtract probability of A and B. So in my example, it's going to be subtracting probability of, of Tuesday and Thursday. In other words, probability that the selected day is both Tuesday and Thursday. So let's think about each. So once you expanded the formula in general form, then focus on finding probability for each. So what is the probability that the randomly selected day is Tuesday, a randomly selected day from, from the month of June? Well, we have to set up a probability fraction. Remember that outcomes are equally likely, right? So we're just using the classical probability formula. So we're setting up the fraction. In the denominator of this fraction, we have to write the total number of all possible outcomes. So when we're selecting dates from from month of June from this calendar, then what's the total number of all possible outcomes? Well, since there are 30 days on this calendar in this month, then there are 30 possible outcomes. So that's the total number of possible outcomes. And then the numerator um, is going to be the number of the desired outcomes. So numerator will always correspond to this description. In other words, how many Tuesdays do I have in that month? Um, Tuesdays are here, so it's one, two, three, four, four Tuesdays. So four days like that. And now that fraction gives us probability that a randomly selected day is Tuesday. Next, we'll need to set up fraction for finding probability that a randomly selected day is Thursday. So it's going to be a similar idea, right? Denominator is 30. That's the total number of all possible outcomes. And the numerator will be the same as the number of Thursdays in that month. So Thursdays are here. Looks like there are five. So five Thursdays. And then we have to subtract probability that the randomly selected day is Tuesday and Thursday. So once again, it's going to be a fraction. 30 is going to be the denominator. We're selecting out of 30 days. But what's going to be the numerator? So that will correspond to this description, Tuesday and Thursday. So when I have word and, I like to rephrase it and maybe use um, some other words. So for example, uh, for example, both, that's how I can think about it. That's another word, so it's both Tuesday and Thursday or at the same time. At the same time. So when I say those words to myself, it's a little bit easier to understand what exactly I'm looking at. So how many days, in other words, how many days on this calendar that are both Tuesdays and Thursdays? Or they're both Tuesdays and Thursdays at the same time? Is it possible for a day of a month to be both Tuesday and Thursday? Well, no, right? So it's impossible. We don't have days like that. So there's zero days like that. And 
In this case, the reason we got zero, and by the way, zero divided by 30 is zero, so that last part of the formula is actually turns into zero. We're only going to be using the first two fractions to get the answer. Well, let's write it down. Uh, 4 over 30 plus 5 over 30, so that's 9 over 30. So the reason we got zero here is because those two events, Tuesday and Thursday, are mutually exclusive events or disjoint events and when events are so it means that they cannot happen at the same time so when we deal with mutually disjoint uh, mutually exclusive or disjoint events technically that general addition formula turns into that simple addition formula so we're not, never going to get that last part but as you can see we don't we can apply general addition formula even in cases like that um, it's just we'll find that the last portion of the formula turns into zero. So it's just safe to use this general addition formula for all cases where, we ha where you have to find probability of event A or B. Probability of A or B. So when you see word or, that's going to be an indication that you need to use formula. Use formula. Okay. So 9 over 30, well, that's going to be a probability, and it says find the given probability in fraction form, so we're going to leave it like that. But So now try, let's try part B. So it says find the probability that a randomly selected day from June 2016 is in the second week or Sunday. One more time, so I see word or, so I have to use formula use the formula, use the general addition rule. And Anna, I will now expand this um, according to the formula. So according to the formula, it says that first I have to write down probability of the first event. So that's the one that before, that's before or. So probability in the second week. Second week or probability that the randomly selected day is in the second week, plus probability of the second event, so that's that second part, probability that the randomly selected day is Sunday, and then minus probability of A and B, so in this case it's going to be probability that the randomly selected day is in the second week, I'll write it shorter, in the second week, and Sunday. Now we're going to focus on calculating each, each probability. We have three, three parts here, so let's focus on each. So let's set up the fraction for the first one. Probability that a randomly selected day in the second week. Again, the total number of possible out outcomes is 30, according to that calendar. But the numerator will correspond to the description of that event so in the second week in other words how many days on that calendar are in the second week so the second week is this week well and it's a full week so we have seven days right so it's going to be seven days in the second week plus probability that a randomly selected day is sunday 30 is in the denominator sunday how many days there are sundays in that month Sunday, one, two, three, four, four. And then minus probability that the randomly selected day is in the second week and Sunday at the same time, or both in the second week and Sunday. Um, so the denominator is 30, but how many days like that we have? So think about it using word both, both in the second week and Sunday. Well, the way we can see that is first we can find all days in the second week right here and out of those days let's find days there are Sundays well here's the only one right so June 5th is the day that's both in the second week and Sunday so that's how you think about word and you're not applying any formula um, here so you just using like the common sense to see how many outcomes like that so it's only one outcome and that's june 
June 5th in this case. June 5th, one day like that. Okay, and then yeah, what's left to do is just to add and subtract those fractions. Remember, we keep the denominator, but we add, subtract the numerator. So 7 plus 4 minus 1. 7 plus 4 minus 1, that's 11 minus 1, 10 over 30. Well, that can be simplified, right? I can divide out 10. So it's 1 over 3. So that's going to be the probability, 1 third or 0.33, right? Or 33% chance. The randomly selected day out of that month is in the second, second week or Sunday. So that's how you apply the general edition rule.